from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the conversion of sinners, for the deceased members of their family, for the televised Mass, and for peace in the world. The Daily Mass on television brings meaning to thousands of lives of people across Canada and beyond. They join with me in thanking you for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we commemorate two great saints, bishops, and theologians from the early Greek-speaking church, Basil of Caesarea and Gregory of Nazianzus. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give light to your church by the example and teaching of bishops, saints, Basil, and Gregory, grant, we pray, that in humility we may learn your truth and practice it faithfully in charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of, of John. My little ones... Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, eternal life. I write these things to you concerning those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And so you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he is revealed, we may have confidence and not be put to shame before him at his coming. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. This is the testimony given by John when the Jewish leaders sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? John said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Forty-nine years ago, Pope Paul VI, not long after the end of the Second Vatican Council, proclaimed January the 1st a world day of peace. What he then began has continued under his successors. Each year, the Pope announces a theme for the day and addresses a message to believers and to people of goodwill everywhere in relation to it. 
The theme chosen by Pope Francis for this year's reflection is overcome indifference and win peace. The indifference he has in mind is multidimensional. It includes indifference to God, to other people, and to the environment. Such indifference, he believes, flows ultimately from an exaggerated preoccupation with oneself, from self-centeredness. The more we turn in on ourselves, the more difficult it is for us to be aware of and open to others. Here, as so often, the Pope tries to blend the realistic awareness of the many challenges facing the world at the present time with encouragement not to let ourselves be overwhelmed by them. One of the reasons we give in to apathy and indifference is the feeling that we as individuals can do very little to meet the suffering and pain, the hunger and homelessness that confront us every day, whether on our streets or in the media. God, the Pope reminds us, is not indifferent. He cares about us. This is a theme that runs all through the Bible. God, it affirms again and again, is not far from us, but near. He involves himself in human life, in the life of individuals and of his people. He hears and responds to the cry of the poor. In Jesus, the Son of God entered into and embraced a human life, a life like ours in all things but sin. His was a life marked not by indifference and apathy, but by compassion and mercy. He reached out and healed the sick, freed the possessed, consoled the sorrowful, welcomed the sinner. His was, in every sense of the word, a life for others. Our culture is sometimes described as a consumer culture. The economy, and with it the well-being of our, our way of life, depend to a large degree on consumer spending. In order to foster it, people bring to bear all the tools of psychology and advertising in order to encourage us to buy things and services we often neither need nor can afford. Such a culture tends to foster a heightened and in some cases a pathological concern with one's own economic and social status and well-being. One of the more important achievements of Western culture has been an increased awareness of human dignity and human rights. The practical implications of this have been enormous. It's a conviction that is rooted in and corresponds with central aspects of biblical teaching. According to it, our dignity is rooted in the fact that we are all children of God, made in his image and likeness, destined to share eternal life with him. Although we are sometimes tempted to forget it, human dignity includes not only rights, but also responsibilities. We are not isolated individuals, but social beings, members of families and communities, of nations, and of humanity itself. We have responsibilities for one another, for our families, first of all, but also for others. We also have responsibilities for the planet on which we all depend for our survival and our well-being. Such responsibilities extend into the future and embrace those who will come after us, our children and their children after them. Indifference to others by robbing us of an essential dimension of what it is to be human ultimately undermines our own dignity and identity. Such indifference on both the individual and the institutional levels, the Pope declares, finds expression in disinterest and a lack of engagement 
which only help to prolong situations of injustice and grave social unbalance, which in turn can lead to conflict. The parable of the Good Samaritan is eloquent in his portrayal both of indifference and of act of mercy. The priest and the Levite who pass the spot where the man who has fallen among the robbers is lying can't help but be aware of his situation. They see him, but they refuse to allow their hearts to be touched by his plight. Theirs is a response of apathy and indifference. When the Samaritan, on the other hand, draws near, he is moved with pity. Like his immediate predecessors, Pope Francis appeals to the notion of solidarity, which he identifies as the key virtue that needs to be developed in order to overcome indifference. It involves an awareness of the many bonds that relate us to one another. We are all human beings, all children of the one Father, all at least potential brothers and sisters of Christ. In reflecting on this truth, and its implications, we can't help but become more sensitive to others and to their needs. Solidarity, the Pope says, helps us ward off destructive cynicism. We need also to pray, to pray that God will transform from within our hearts, that he will turn them from stone into hearts of flesh. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will help us overcome indifference and apathy in the face of the needs of others. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of all those who have written or phoned in asking for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. For peace among nations, between individuals, and in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. For the mingling of this water and wine, we can partake of this divinity, we can partake of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept the sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered to your glory in honor of Saints Basil and Gregory a means for our eternal salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saints Basil and Gregory you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of their holy life, teach her by their words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to their prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Have mercy on us. 
kings of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly temple, Almighty God, confirm and increase from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Saints Basil and Gregory, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend and we'll be looking for you all again on Monday. And of love, oh Maria, try.